Welcome back, disgruntled sports fans. Another week, another top ten. Are y'all ready to break down some fake phony pretend football games? Let's do this. Let's start with Dickity Dackity Dirt. He's got to get the ball in the end zone. Them boys are losing by five points. They have a shot right here to shock the world and beat the Eagles with a last second touchdown pass. Show them how it's done, Dak. Throw that ball into the end zone. Dak's got time in the pocket. All he's got to do after he finishes dancing around back there is put that ball in the end zone and give one of his receivers a chance to win the game. Now, Dak, do not throw that ball short of the end zone. You better not, Dak. So, of course, Dak throws the ball short of the end zone. Shocker! Wow! On the final play of the game when you have to put the ball in the end zone, he throws to the one guy who's not in the end zone. All the rest of the Cowboys who went out for a pass are standing in the end zone, waiting on their chance to possibly catch the winning TD. Instead, Dak throws to the one dude not in the end zone, and as the game expires, them boys lay down and lose. Oh yeah, baby, them boys laying down and losing on purpose on the final play of the game. That's gotta hurt if you're a fanboy who thinks it's real. <laughs> Roll em. So this play takes us to Sin City. The Giants have a new quarterback in there. His name is Tommy DeVito. I don't know. On this play, he looks more like Danny DeVito. <laughs> That's pretty good, you have to admit. So Danny DeVito here, he throws the ball uh, really good. About as good as you'd expect Danny DeVito to throw a ball. You know, right into double coverage. And what makes this one extra hilarious to me is these two dudes are both going up for the ball and this Giants receiver pretends like he doesn't know that it's about to get intercepted. And he leaves his back turned <laughs> and he waits until it does get intercepted. Look, he's still got his back turned and he's pretending like he doesn't know that the ball's been underthrown intentionally and that it's being picked off right now like his job is supposed to be to become the defender and try and knock it away and keep it from being intercepted but no now he's acting like a clown he's got his back turned expecting what the ball to come o over your head and magically land in your hands bro what are you doing that's the worst acting job right there and none of the fans in the stands will spot this and of course, Danny DeVito throws this interception. Now the dude turns around way back here like, oh, he got picked off. I had no idea. Oh, I should get over there and stop that guy. <laughs> Man, are you telling me there were two doinks in the same game, one by each team? You already know what I'm about to say. Hit it. Well, I tried to tell you so, but I guess you didn't know. They've been messing with your goals, and there's magnets in the poles. You lied to me. All those field goals I thought were so real. You lied to me. Yes, you did. Yes, you did. You lied to me. All those field goals I thought were so real. You lied to me. Now I cry. Now I cry, 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 return of the doink, return of the doink, return of the doink. Another ball hits the pole, return of the doink, return of the doink, return of the doink. Another ball hits the pole. So this game out in Frankfurt, Germany had a bunch of phony looking plays, this being one of them. Always somebody scoring just before the half, it seems. And in this situation, you got what looks like a fumble that's on purpose. It looks like the ball squirts out. And then this Chiefs guy grabs it. Hill grabs him around the waist, which is kind of weird looking. And then it's like he turns him around and positions him. 
to where this guy can hand the ball off to his teammate and just give him a little pitch. So he pitches it to his teammate here, which you don't usually see. So it just makes the whole play look really weird. And then when you see this guy start to run down the sidelines, this is where the extra phony rigoroni sets in. Number 11, all he's got to do is knock this guy out of bounds. He's right next to uh, the line. All you got to do is just shove him. Just shove him, but he doesn't even try. Doesn't even make an attempt to shove him out of bounds. And then this next guy, number 26, same thing. You're coming up with all that speed. Just shove him out of bounds. Don't do anything stupid. Just shove him out of bounds. And this guy goes for the feet, like always, but he doesn't even try and like trip him or anything. He just goes down like he's trying to smell this guy's feet. Doesn't even make an attempt to grab the feet or trip him. Just goes down and lays down on his face like an idiot. Like, dude, what was that? And this is just before the half. You see teams scoring just before the half all the time now. It didn't used to be like that, but it is now. So here's a storyline to keep an eye on. There might be some money to be made. Dobbs was on the Cardinals last week, got traded to the Vikings when Kirk Cousins went down. And now he's in a position where the Vikings are four and four. He could lead them to a victory and go five and four. And now Dobbs will be in position to be in the playoff hunt when it seemed like just a week ago, he was with the loser Cardinals and had no shot. So that's definitely a storyline to pay attention to. And when I see stuff like uh, this play right here, where they're purposely letting Dobbs score a touchdown and be the hero, I'm definitely going to keep an eye on it. So right here, you'll see a Falcons dude reach out, not even really try to get him. And then you'll see another dude come running up right here. He's got him dead to rights behind the line of scrimmage, but he doesn't make any real effort. Like, what are you doing, bro? Are you, like, trying to touch his butt? Are you playing two-hand touch? Like, what are you doing? Like, is this a professional effort from a, a professional defense? I don't think so. So Dobbs is looking like he's now like what? Like the most powerful running quarterback of all time. Yeah, okay. So you got two defenders coming up right here. One, two, and let's watch the effort they make to tackle Dobbs. Oh, look, they run into each other like a couple of stooges and take each other out. Meanwhile, Dobbs just trots right into the end zone. Again, I'm going to be paying attention to this storyline because what they are doing with Dobbs, making him look like some sort of hero the minute he shows up to Minnesota, that is definitely something I wasn't expecting. But I'm going to be expecting it now. The NFL wants you to believe that Josh Dobbs just needed a new uniform, a fresh new coat of paint, and uh, some new scenery, and now he's awesome. Yeah, that's right. It was the Cardinals who were bad, and Josh Dobbs is just an awesome hero of a quarterback, and none of us ever knew. Yeah, okay. So when you see stuff like this, you know, Dobbs, dead to rights, about to be sacked. And he just like, whoop, hops right out of it, no problem. Something to raise an eyebrow about. And then when you see a dude like this coming up strong, all he's got to do is run up and swat the ball out. Just run up and jump on his back. But instead, he dives for no reason at the feet, lands on his face. Number zero, he also dives and lands on his face. Yeah, this is something to keep an eye on. Now we're supposed to act like Dobbs is so fast, so athletic, that he's just making dudes just dive and whiff like left and right, no problem. Okay, got another dude coming up acting like Dobbs has the greatest moves ever. He's gonna dive, like who are you even diving at, dude? That did not look realistic at all. You did not even make an attempt to try and tackle Joshua Dobbs. There's no way his moves are that good that you should have dove and landed in that spot. So stupid. So if they're going to make Dobbs look like he's basically unstoppable and it takes like several Falcons to bring him down and all he needed was just a quick trade, a change of scenery, and now he's like this amazing... 
Uh, yeah, I'm definitely going to be keeping an eye on this. We got ourselves a fake and phony pretend football game out in Frankfurt, folks. To a tug of my schlonga, back to pass. He's got a man wide open. He's headed for the end zone. He has absolutely smoked this defender. This is an easy touchdown pass right here. Except, uh, Tua throws it to, uh, that spot on the ground right there. What the hell was that? You got a man wide open for a touchdown and you throw it to nobody? Who was that ball thrown to? I mean, come on, y'all. The Dolphins could have tied this game easily. You can't call that a miscommunication because Tua could see that his man was wide open and headed to the end zone. All he had to do was, you know, throw it to him. But instead, throws the ball over here to nobody. Okay. The NFL will soon be known as the National Flag Football League. It'll be the NFFL, National Flag Football. And let me explain. What you are witnessing is the evolution of American tackle football into flag football. Bryce Young gonna throw this ball straight to the Colts. Now, normally you would try and tackle this guy, but all the players have these things that look like flags in week nine. Almost every player on the field had like a little towel or like an army thing, a camouflage towel thing flopping out of their pants. It, it didn't happen in every week, but in week nine, almost every player had one of these hanging out of their pants. Now, you would think, well, what, what difference does that make, Jake? Oh, just watch. So this player right here, who should be trying to make a tackle, is doing what? Explain to me what he's doing. <laughs> Looks to me like he's grabbing a flag. So this guy, who also has what looks like a flag, see what I'm saying? Every guy in week nine had a damn towel or a flag thing. And so he's grabbing a flag because it's flag football, right? Boop. Right? You are watching the evolution of the NFL literally turning into flag football before your very eyes. It won't be long. Five, ten years, that's going to be considered a tackle right there. You think I'm kidding? This is psychological preparation, psychological conditioning for you accepting flag football in the future. Watch. You're down. <laughs> and that brings us to the number one most rigged play of the week. And it is this Chargers pump return. It has to be. And let me show you why. So first, Jets guy going to come up and look like a fool. It's going to be this dude right here. He's going to come up and do the old smell my charger feet routine. Like, was that even an attempt to trip him? You didn't even really go for his feet. What are you doing? Oh, gotta love the NFL. All right, so homeboy right here, he just starts putting his head down, right? Like, look, I, I wanna smell those feet. I wanna smell me some charger feet. So he sticks one arm out, doesn't even really try and take the guy down at all just falls down all oh, that no and then just gets ran over by his own man that is awesome yeah great effort bro all right so anyone else want to try and take this guy down how about you kicker oh wait that's right we all know kickers can't do anything but kick and punters can't do anything but punt they have zero athletic ability. They've never tackled anyone in their lives. It's literally impossible for a kicker or a punter to do anything but kicker punt a ball. I mean, watch. Of 
course! He falls down, his buddy falls down at the exact same time, and Davis is off to the races. And the Jets never recovered from this. I told you that the Chargers were going to win this game. The spread didn't make any sense. <laughs> so I told you the Chargers would win, and there they go. They win the game. And that, my friends, is your number one most rigged play of the week. Please like, share, and subscribe, and I will see you next time. Peace.